Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Valen, and this is Random Things. Today, we're going to be covering the Imbuer Station. So as you can see here, it looks like a rather simple block with a little uh, kind of skull pattern on it, this little uh, blue disc on top. It's actually relatively simple to make, but it, it does have some cost to it. And that is uh, a couple of vines, a water bucket, uh, some hardened clay, which of course is uh, just, you know, uh, clay that has been cooked in a furnace, a couple lily pads, and an emerald. So therefore with that emerald, that's probably your biggest expense. Uh, finding the clay, well, y if you're in a mess of biome, then you just pick some up. But otherwise you can always cook some. The vines are probably the most difficult thing to find along with an emerald if you're not uh, near an extreme uh, hills biome, but villagers could always get that for you. And then you get yourself an imbuing station. And it has this little uh, UI here that uh, it looks a little confusing at first, but it's very comparable to a vanilla Minecraft um, brewing stand. And uh, therefore, you just need a few simple ingredients and you'll get yourself different kinds of imbues. These imbues are basically potions and they function almost identically to the regular uh, vanilla brewing stand and how it will uh, function with uh, making just like some uh, potions and stuff. So let's uh, go over the different types of brews. And uh, you'll need uh, some water bottles and a few other ingredients in order to make this. Uh, to start with, if you want an experience imbue, then you'll want a lesser magic bean, which uh, you can make these uh, with a regular bean and gold nuggets, which is also found in random things, uh, the beans are, and a water bottle, lapis lazuli, and glowstone dust. You put all those together in this and it will start uh, functioning. In fact, let me uh, grab those items. I'll show you how it works and uh, we can actually make up an experience imbue. So uh, to start with, we're going to put the lapis here, the glowstone in there, the lesser magic bean, and put a water bottle and you'll see it's got the little particle effects going on here uh, saying that it's currently uh, cooking or imbuing the water bottle with a special brew and uh, you'll get yourself there it is, an experience imbue, which I've already got, as you can see here, several. And I don't have any effects currently going on with me at the moment. Uh, the weapons that I have right now just have unbreaking on them, and they've been painted with uh, some of the uh, uh, items. Plus, I have something from another mod in here just so I can store experience if I want to. Uh, but the idea was I can spawn a pig. And uh, you see that I currently have a little bit of experience. Let me deposit that. I now have none. And with this, I can kill the pig and pick up a little bit of experience. So you go, I got about a half a level's worth, uh, and I can store that again. Then I can put another pig down, and you'll get, you know, varying amounts uh, in Minecraft with, uh, you know, killing items, killing critters and stuff like that. You can see I got, you know, just like maybe a quarter of a level that time. Other times it's a bit more. And the reason I'm showing you this is because if I have an experience imbuer, there you go, got another half level, and I use the experience imbue, I drink it, and it lasts for about five minutes. Uh, and you'll have this effect. Uh, basically, the uh, critters that you kill at this point, uh, if you can get them before they run away, you'll see that I got a lot more experience that time. Now, of course, it is somewhat random, the amount of experience that you might still get, but you're guaranteed to get a bit more than you usually would. Look at that. I almost got an entire level there. So, I mean, this is just giving you an example of one of the imbues. Yes, you're going to get the particle effects because you're under a, a potion there. And you can see I actually didn't get that much for experience that time. That's part of the thing. If I were to have done this with vanilla, I would have gotten probably even less than that. So I'm still getting the experience uh, from it. Now, if I were to bring down a pig and I shoot him with a bow, takes a couple shots, of course, uh, you'll see that he still drops experience. I, I don't get that much. It's because ranged weaponry doesn't really work the same uh, with this because it uh, it more, more or less affects you and how you do things. Of course, I got absolutely terrible experience that time. But it's going to give you just like a percentage more uh, on top of what you already have. So it's going to help you get more experience overall. Uh, I do recommend, get out of here, that you uh, do things with uh, melee attacks if you want to really take advantage of it. And all the imbues will last for about five minutes. Now, the thing is, you can only have one imbue at a time. Allow me to demonstrate by drinking this poison imbue here. You can see I've got three and a half minutes left. 
And there we go, I now have a poison imbue, and it did not stack with the other one, so therefore I only have one at a time. Now, a poison imbue is made with a spider eye, rotten flesh, and mushroom with a water bottle in the middle. We'll get you that, and uh, the effect of this is that uh, when you hit something, you'll give it a poison effect. And you can see now that the pig has currently got poison too for, uh, I don't know, several seconds. And he won't die because poison doesn't kill things. It just brings him down to a half a heart. Of course, this isn't going to poison everything. It will poison uh, things that are, you know, able to be poisoned. So keep that in mind. And then, of course, you can always kill him off as you want to. Uh, but <laughs> there are other imbues still. There is a fire imbue, which is even more powerful because, well, you're going to set things on fire. The uh, recipe for that is coal, flint, blaze powder, and of course the water bottle will get you a fire imbue. And these so far have not been that expensive. I mean, this one here, you just have to kill like a few mobs and find a mushroom. Uh, this one here, coal, flint, and blaze powder, you have to have probably have gone to the nether most likely uh, in order to obtain that. And let me drink this one. And you'll see that uh, I'll drop down this pig and he gets the uh, uh, fire effect on him. Let me uh, actually just hit him with a, you know, I, I'm, I'm not actually hitting him with anything and it sets him on fire. He starts burning and may die from it. Of course, uh, burning entities that die often will drop some kind of cooked version of their tasty meats, <laughs> just as an example. But um, yeah, I was just showing you that so that you could see that uh, it, it doesn't have to be a weapon. It doesn't, it could just be your own uh, hand or, or an item that you're hand, holding on to. But uh, I will also demonstrate, you can see I still have four and a half minutes it's a fire imbue going on. If I shoot him with a bow, he does not gain uh, the uh, fire effect. So once again, the ranged effects do not give you the imbue abilities uh, as you might hope or expect perhaps. Now, there are a couple more that are still even more powerful yet, and that is the wither imbue, which of course is going to be a wither skeleton skull, nether brick, and a gas tier. This is probably one of the more expensive ones because wither skeleton skulls are a little bit more difficult to come by, especially if you don't have a way of farming them or beheading them. And of course the gas tier is a little more challenging uh, and not so much if you have the ability to fly or can uh, kill ghasts with a ranged weapon over top of something non-lava like. But uh, you'll get yourself the wither imbue, which of course, guess what that does? It allows you to wither enemies. Uh, you hit them and they get the wither 2 effect for several seconds. And yeah, he just jumped into that, that end portal there. Come here, you. I'm going to hit you again. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit you again. Come here. Come here. There he goes. And he dies, dropped his, his uh, tasty meats that's non-cooked, of course, because, well, it's just a wither effect. But, uh, I mean, it, once again, it, it doesn't stack with the other imbues, so you have to, like, kind of make your choice as to which one you'd like to use, which one would best suit you. If there's a, a creature, mob, or player that might be weak to fire or, or uh, is not protected to poison that you're trying to fight, then that would probably be your best bet as opposed to something like wither where they might uh, be a wither and be, uh, you know, immune to it. Now, of course, we have the last one, the Collapse Imbue, which I actually can't show you this because I need a second player in here, and uh, Kashka, who is uh, often my helper in a lot of things like this, is not around. She is currently on a business trip, but I can tell you what it does. Collapse Imbue. First, you need a sack and aid spores vines, water bottle, and slime ball. Of course, these three are, are relatively easy to come by. Slime ball can be difficult depending on uh, what mod pack you have currently installed if you're not playing with a, a single mod in there. The saconade spores are very specific on how you can find those, but it will make you a collapse imbue. And what does the collapse imbue do? It will bestow the effect on the uh, target when you uh, hit them with some kind of uh, melee weapon. And the effect is it will turn their screen upside down. <laughs> Only for a few seconds, but it's very disorienting. Um, so the, they'll basically be looking at the world uh, as if it was uh, flipped, uh, flipped upside down and uh, reversed. So it, it, it's very confusing and um, totally awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I recommend you try it. Uh, maybe, you know, troll your friends and just like kind of give them a poke with, with the potion or something like that afterwards. And then you, you maybe share with them a little bit. But uh, the, the Sakenade Spores. I'm actually going to go out into another world uh, so that uh, we can uh, show you exactly where you can find these. And that is going to be here in uh, a mushroom island biome is usually your best bet. Now, I did look in like some dark forest ones because you're going to need mushrooms giant mushrooms to be specific, and you should find them underneath. You'll find something like this, Saconade. Now the thing is, if you just break this with your hand, 
it will just disappear like you uh, broke vines they just break and go away so you're going to want to make sure that you have shears you then break it and you'll get yourself some saccanade spores and you can see here there's some more uh, underneath this mushroom as well and these are naturally spawning if you have uh, random things installed there's another one over here so you're going to want to look for one of these uh, you know mycelium based biomes uh, not just having uh, these large mushrooms in the biome is going to be enough uh, it'll probably have to be a mushroom island or something of that nature so there you go, folks. I hope you enjoyed today's uh, random things bit by bit. And, uh, you know, you're able to learn a little something, have a little bit of fun with your friends on some of these new brews. Uh, they're not spectacularly different from some of the vanilla ones, but some of them are. Uh, so anyway, don't forget to give a like, subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to spread the mischief to others if you think they'll enjoy this content. Until next time, folks, I'll see ya.